Zombie Apocalypse. <laughs> My name's Calvin and I'm going to be your host for this video here. Um, you lot are going to be following me on my journey of pipe welding. And in today's video, I have some 8 inch for you. So it's an 8 inch T and an 8 inch elbow that I'm going to be welding together. And I'm going to try to address and answer some of your questions, such as my mask. This here is Speed Glass G501 air fed respirator. Now, with the mask, it comes with a respirator here. So if you look closely, inside of it is my filter. So this is going to be providing me with fresh air fed straight into the mask. And right here is a poison filter. This, this gets rid of all the harmful um, welding gases. The machine I'm going to be running is the Fronius TPS 400i. So I'm going to be probably welding, if I go to my job, my 8 inch setting, I'm probably going to be welding around 240 amps and here is the gas mixer that I'm going to be using there's the gas right there and here is the wire that I'm going to be using it's going to be a 1 mil diameter solid wire, copper free <coughs> bless me all of my gaps are going to be a 3 mil spacer and then I'm going to be rooting at around 125 amps. There's a Fronius Synergic root setting that controls the amps and that does the wire speed and the voltage automatically. But the root is going to be an open root short circuit and I'm going to be capping it with pulse. So with pulse I ain't going to get any splatter and it's, it's almost like spray arc where the, where the wire doesn't touch the molten pool but it's more controllable because you can weld it in different positions and one last thing the material is six mil thick it's shed 20 tight and it's been, it's been welded to class two so that means for every 100 mil of weld you're allowed to miss 25 mil of root penetration i don't aim to do that but that's just the specifications of this job so it's, it's all low pressure there's pn16 flanges going on it so it can't hold any more than 16 bar of pressure it's all low pressure low temperature probably um chilled water is going to be going through it or something like that So right now, while I'm welding, I'm looking to make sure I get a keyhole so I know that I'm getting a root in here. And yeah, it's on short circuit arc. So that means every time the wire touches the, the molten pool, it creates a short circuit, heats up, and then deposits a droplet of metal. The key to having a good weld um, is to recognize and maintain a um, good hand position. So, you need to keep your hand steady. You need to, to be in a consistent position to get a consistent weld. The more you move around with your weld, the more it shows in your root. If you go too slow at a certain point, it builds up in your root and you get a big root. If you don't move at all, your root drops through. If you're too far, you, if, if you're too fast, you don't get um, penetration. All of these things come into, um, come into play when it comes to trying to get a consistent root. Now I'm going to cap it at 240 amps. It's a little bit low, but you don't have to go crazy high. So what I'm looking for is a, um, the molten pool to touch both sides of the prep, and then I move on. 
and I'm relying on my setting and my hand position to make the weld come out nice. But as soon as the molten pool touches both sides, you move on. This is why I like the pulse setting on the Thronia, because look how big this molten pool is and how stable it is. We're getting minimal splatter, and to be honest, we shouldn't be getting any splatter anyway, but the pulse weld is a nice solid weld, nice high temperature, stable, doesn't drip away. You can weld it in a multiple position, and you get a lot of penetration. Time to weld the socket. So I'm going to do a routing pass. Just a, um, on the synergic root setting. I've turned the power up on my torque, so I don't know how, how powerful I'm doing. It's just a peace of mind root run as you do. Turning it down because I've got a bit more of a bigger gap here. So this here is a different setting that I've got it on, so it doesn't mess with the camera. Instead of pulse, it's a synergic um, spray art. That's why it looks and sounds the way it does. And hopefully it doesn't mess with the, the camera, making it flicker. But I tend to not weld like this, because of the viscosity of it is too much like water. And it's um, hard to do it out of position sometimes. Spray art just wants to be done um, horizontally flat, really.
So, all the butt welds are done now. That took 26 minutes to do these welds. And you can see the quality is a little bit more better than the last ones. Now I've got a camera and right in my way. My start stop, I'm gonna grind them down after. But yeah, it's all welded up. Now I can flange it. I've just leveled off the pipe and I've put marks to which direction the bolt holes need to go in order for it to, um, to be correct. Now I need to get the measurements. 500, 568. So that's what the measurement needs to be. So what I'm gonna do is 568 minus, so, so the measurement will be from the face of the flange here to the center of the pipe. But if I minus what half the diameter is of the pipe, which is 110 mil for eight inch. So 110 mil minus will give you the measurement to this part here of the pipe. So then I can just use a level straight across, measure what this here is and whatever I've got left over from the overall measurement will be how far your flange has to stick out. This is the guessing game because there's no knowing which angle your um, pipe is sticking out. So yeah, it's a guessing game really. You better just hope that your fabrication skills and the chop of the pipe is good and it saves a lot more time. So 568 minus 445 mil and I check more than one spot to make sure it's true. See, this is what I'm talking about. So over here, is 445 and over here is 441 so i'm going to split the difference and i'll do 443 minus 443 minus half the diameter which is 110 mil which is 15 mil which that there is how long the flange should be hanging out in the first place but let's see let's double check so so i'm going to double check this way here as well 245 mil so if i was doing straight then i'll check it this way 568 minus 305 which is so that measurement would be from the butt weld to the center of the elbow that I've got a chart that shows all the measurements for these, minus that, minus um, how long this pipe here is. 245 minus 245 gives me 18 mil right here. So this is the problem. You can split the difference between the two. You can go by your judgment as to what you think the right measurement is. I'm gonna personally go and do it 16 mil. Now this one here is 755 mil long and it's easier because you don't have to check side to side. So 755 minus, 755 minus 560 mil, minus 560 mil, minus, what the center of the t, uh, t would be to the middle of the butt weld which is 178 that gives me 17 mil this flange sticks out 17 mil so the overall is 2010 mil so i'm going to measure from the end of the elbow over to here 1800 and 85, 1,885 minus 1,885 minus 110 mil, 15 mil, perfect. The chop list was made for a 15 mil ha uh, flange to be hung on. So when you get a 15 mil measurement or close enough to 15, then you know you've done something right. All of these flanges are covered in oil. So I'm just going to wipe them off. So I use a chalk and a steel rule to mark 
and pull the flanges out how much they need to be. So 15 mil, and I put a chalk on it so I don't have to worry about um, anything else. I can move on and I know the, lot, the line that it goes to. Now hanging the flanges. I'm an idiot. Again, autopilot, one whole top. What am I thinking? That's why it's so easy to make mistakes um, doing these pipes. You just, just do so many of them. You go on autopilot. So I tack the top and I pull it out and then I tack the bottom and that allows me to get a consistent gap all the way around the flange. Now I can check the other orientation and then I'm going to roughly get everything in position and then I'm going to check it with the measurements and then as long as the measurements are good I can tack it together. So I'm going to leave you lot with me welding up the final flanges. And um, just a note before the, the video finishes, this is probably going to be coming out around Christmas time. So I think I'm going to take a few weeks off um, after this video because I've been putting out a, a one video every Friday for the last two or so months, three months. And it's been a, a, a big grind, a big push for me. And um, yeah, I'm just going to have a little break, especially now Cyberpunk 2077 has come out. I'm going to play that for those of you who know. And um, yeah, but again, guys, stay safe out of there. Wear all your correct PPE. I've seen too many videos of people welding without gloves on, with, without air-fed respirators and all that. Whatever you do, don't hurt yourself or slowly kill yourself for your work. Don't do that, guys. Keep yourself safe, safe out there. Um, get a mask, get some kind of breathing protection. Wear the correct clothes. And yeah, with that little rant over, um, enjoy the rest of the video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.
Zombie Apocalypse.